Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollo and this is a new Elden Ring tier list video. This time we're covering the Faith Weapons, of which there are actually a ridiculous amount of weapons to choose from in Elden Ring. However, there are still many Faith Weapons that are just not that relevant. So I've got 17 of what I think are the best picks. Once again, S stands for perfect and pretty unique. A is still an incredible weapon, but it just isn't as incredible as the S tier picks. B is fun and effective, but has some clear weaknesses and C is ultimately brilliant for a limited time or in select situations. But as always, these weapons have made it onto a list that is the best faith weapons in the game. So whether they're S grade or C grade, they're still pretty fun to use and very good. Let's do an example of each of the grades uh, to give you an idea then. Starting with the Golden Halberd, which is a faith-based, well, halberd. It's a heavy weapon, good for strength faith users and can be found very early in the game, literally that tree sentinel as you leave the first steps. This weapon is very strong. It's AR is great it's got a self buff golden vow and it's jumping heavy is ridiculously good and what many speedrunners were just spamming when they were working out which weapon is going to see them through the early game this was a top contender the problem is it falls off late game in terms of pve and in pvp it's got a simple and repetitive move set it's very strong and a great early game option it just doesn't last forever here's an example of a b tier pick Vikes War Spear is one of the only frenzy weapons you can find in the game, and it works as a good spear with roll catch, range potential, and reasonable AR. Like I said, it's one of the only weapons to actually have frenzy buildup. So many frenzy on Mandus builds, they're going to run this. The downside is that frenzy doesn't work against many enemies. It only works against tarnished players in PvP and certain enemies in PvE, meaning it's actually quite weak without that benefit, but is unique and effective at what it does. Now let's do an A tier example example with Malekef's Black Blade. This Colossal Sword is a very powerful strength weapon and as a Colossal Sword it benefits from the 1.04 buffs, increased attack speed, raw damage when two-handed and this weapon in particular comes with a three-part Ash of War where you slam the blade around and down and then explode with the destined death effect which will cause the enemy to have a 10% health reduction for a while and deal damage over time. Very powerful in trading, it can stagger bosses, the raw damage in AR potential of this weapon is great but it's not an S tier pick because I believe there's a one for one similar weapon that's just better. Our first S tier pick then for me is the God Slayer's Great Sword which is another colossal sword in this list receiving the same benefits that I just listed but a much faster moveset which is a bit more vertical. It's very satisfying to use it has an incredible visual design and it comes with a black fire or black flame as part of its Ash of War which is a two-parter. You do a quick swing which can trade and catch people out in PvP really well and then follow that up with a heavy black flame attack which increases the range and the damage. You can combo that into a second double attack as well and should you land it it'll do big damage at big range and deal damage over time. Now it is missing the destined death effect of the Malakath's Black Blade but I feel it's a much better moveset with a lot more potential. The Ash of War has that faster two-part attack so I think it's better in PvP and it's one of the rare Ashes of War that can be cancelled out of meaning you can faint it or save your FP if you've missed which is absolutely incredible to be honest, every Ash of War should have that. So mechanically, I just think it's better. Let's go back down the list then from the top. Another S tier pick is, of course, the Blasphemoth Blade. I've talked about this a lot in a lot of different videos, like the Boss Weapons video. So to keep it simple and short, this is just a really effective, overloaded weapon. Its AR is great. It's got a great sword moveset, incredible visual design, an Ash of War that is just ridiculous for both PvE and PvP, a built-in lifesteal effect when you deal damage or land killing blows. It works in so many builds, even if it's just on your back to get that lifesteal or killing blow mechanic. And its raw damage is nuts thanks to the fact that you can buff it up with physical and fire. One of the best weapons in the game, hands down. Now let's go back down to an A tier pick and this one's gone up in my estimations. This is the Black Knife. As a dagger it has tiny range but it makes up for it with incredible attack speed. This weapon is super buffable. With many successive hits you're going to rack up some AR and big damage. To combat its short range, it has an incredible Ash of War that was also buffed up in that patch, coming out even faster now, and it has hyper armor, so it's very likely you can get it off or even trade in PvP. It comes with that destined death effect, so we're reducing the enemy's health by 10%, and we're dealing damage over time. And what's incredible in PvP is if, yeah, they roll it, they still get the Destined Death debuff and damage over time. So you can catch people out, say when they're low health, or just get the debuff on them, even when they evade it, which is silly. I really recommend you give them a go. And we're going to directly compare them to another dagger that is 
almost essentially the same thing. The Blade of Calling is another dagger that works the same. It's a Faith Dagger with an Ash of War that is exactly the same with the Leap Up, Hyper Armor, and then fling out the damage. Sadly, it's just nowhere near as good as the Black Knife though. It has higher base damage, so when you hit, you do more damage, but then the Dot of the Black Knife takes effect, and therefore the Blade of Calling just doesn't do as much. And then you also don't get the Destined Death debuff. It also has lower output based on the scalings, so running two of these would be weaker than running two Black Knives. I still think it's a really cool and fun weapon to use, and very valid and works well, even if it's just not as good as the Black Knife. Now let's double up in the B grade with two scythes. We have the Wing Scythe and the Halo Scythe. So many people talked to me about these weapons when I was making my original Here's Some Good Faith Weapons videos. The Wing Scythe has that effect where you can prevent people from healing. You have that leap up and slam, dealing big damage if you can land it. While the Halo Scythe has that incredible ranged sort of holy circle fling, which has a delay, making it a great ranged attack in PvP for catching people out, and I had a lot of fun using it. To say the least, they're very strong, especially when power stanced. Separately though, I really don't enjoy these things. I think two-handing a scythe just isn't very good in this game. Power stancing them, it's a totally different story though. They're very fun and strong. And while I think they're strong and that's why they're on this list, I also don't think they're like top of the pack. Let's go back down to C grade. Yes, this video actually has more than one or two, we have three at least so far. This is, of course, the boss weapon, the Giant's Red Braid. It's a whip that is cool and in design is gnarly as well. Literally the hair of the, the fire giant. Physical and fire and the ash of war that has you swinging the weapon around you in a circle with some fire effects as well. The problem is it holds you in place when you do that. It's extremely vulnerable and it's quite easy to evade uh, in PvP. While it's strong and good and fun to use, Bleed whips exist, which are absolutely ridiculously strong in both PvE, where you can bleed an enemy, and PvP, of course. I think bleed whips are actually underrated in this game because they're very strong. So the whips that don't have bleed ultimately are weaker and are less relevant. Let's go back up to B grade. We have a few of these for this video. This is Marika's hammer, another boss weapon. With small range, the hammers are a bit awkward to use, but I think very fun and cool. The power stands hammers feel great and you can get through shields with them really well. Great crushing or staggering damage. Very underrated and very underused as well, but perhaps Perhaps that's because of their tiny range and limited selection in Elden Ring. Marika's Hammer then is definitely one of the best options in the game and it has that Ash of War which is the one you see in the Radigan fight, the big leap up into the air and slam down in a holy shattering energy. Looks and feels great and it comes out even faster since 1.04. Problem is the damage is still fairly low compared to many weapons on this list, the output just not comparable. Thing is though it's very valid and works in both PvE and PvP, especially when you catch people out with the Ash of War because it does crazy damage. So I think it just reaches above C grade. Jumping up to A then, we have yet another boss faith weapon. For some reason, so many of the boss weapons are just faith weapons. The Sacred Relic Sword is the final boss weapon, the sword it uses against you. A deck scaling faith weapon with a great sword moveset and a really cool visual style. And really, there's no scenario where this weapon, it just doesn't, it feels good to use in PvE and PvP. Problem is that Ash of War, which yes, is the incredible wide reaching rune arc that yeah, so many people use to farm runes. Brilliant in PvE because of the range that it has and it works in so many scenarios. In PvP though, it's extremely easy to avoid this Ash of War and it leaves you very vulnerable while you're using it. I really tried to make this work, aiming it off angle, catching people out. Ultimately, they just have to dodge at the right time, no matter what, or get around and behind you. If we could cancel this Ash of War, I think it would be way better. You could start it to feint out what you're doing and then throw another one or charge it up to delay it or get out like a quicker, weaker one out. If we had more control over it, I might actually put this as an S tier, but sadly, we just don't. Speaking of S tier though, our last S tier pick for this list for me is the Golden Order Great Sword and I'm really happy to be putting it up there because this weapon, its design is wonderful. It is the companion to the Dark Moon Blade and comes with its own very unique Ash of War where you do an incredible stance that explodes holy light around you in AoE and then you do a sweeping attack which sends out, hey, a little runa, kind of like the other boss weapon. These days though, 
since patch 1.04, it is doing so much more damage. That Ash of War combo comes out so much faster and just took in those animations way less time. It pairs incredibly well, in fact, with the Blasphemous Blade, and you can get double the benefits of both, which is awesome. That is a really strong build, in fact. The range at which you can send out that Rune Arc, the damage it does, the power of this weapon baseline, and how buffable it is. Clearly an S tier pick. All right, with just four weapons left for the list, let's jump back down to the C grade for our last C tier pick. This is the Beast Claw Great Hammer. Great Hammers just aren't amazing in Elden Ring with a very repetitive and simple moveset. Dealing good damage and of course posture damage, but very predictable and repetitive. Now the AR of this weapon is respectable and it comes with that Ash of War, the slam of the Beast Claw effect. There is an incantation much like this that does the same AoE or we can just do the cone one, but this is a much bigger AoE and with its trading potential with the armor it has, you can make this work in PvP and I have and I find it quite fun to use. Problem is, it is just more efficient to use one of the cheap incantations and run a colossal weapon or another weapon that just does more, that has more AR, that has a better or more varied moveset. It's strong, and if you really want to be like a beast man, this is the weapon for it. Jumping up to B grade, let's talk about the Staff of the Avatar. Another bit of a bland weapon with its kind of repetitive colossal hammery moveset, and of course, it's Ash of War, which is just a stronger butt slam. What's funny about this weapon is that that butt slam didn't used to work it didn't actually have the golden shockwave and it did like one or two i mean literally one or two damage when you did it it was clearly broken since then they fixed it and it's actually got ridiculous base ar and very easy to buff up ar at that so you can get some staggering numbers with this thing but you know there's a better strength weapon to do the same thing with in the case of the giant's crusher it's an effective weapon in all content just because of its base ar but yeah very repetitive simple moveset its output is what gets it into a b grade though. Okay, we're down to the last two weapons of the list, and they're both, surprisingly, magma weapons. The Magma Worms Scale Sword is your curved greatsword of the two, and as a physical and fire weapon, extremely buffable. Its AR is ludicrous when you get that going. It also comes with a unique heavy attack, the guillotine sort of slam, and the Ash of War, which does the same thing, but has the lava effect and some hyper armor. And you can follow it up for another attack that will spread even more magma. If you trade with that in PvP, the enemy, he's not going to like it. It does so much damage. You have the armor to get it off and they'll be standing in magma as well. The problem with this is even though its recovery has been improved in a recent patch, it's still very much stuck in this animation. Do this to a boss and you do big damage, but you leave yourself super exposed. The base range, in fact, of these big curved swords much less than I'd like. Colossal Swords just feel much better because of that. I really like this weapon and like having a build that either runs worn or power senses them, but it's very much a all-in, exposed, trading style of play. That's why it's a B grade for me. And the weapon above it at A grade, the Magma Blade, is just all of that without the vulnerabilities. It's a curved sword, meaning if you power sense these, you have the best roll catch running attack in the game. You have ridiculously fast attacks for successive buffing and benefits to your AR from that. It's fire and physical, so buffable in that way. So it has comparable AR potential to the bigger, heavier weapon. Its DPS output then is way better, and the Ash of War, even better. Trading with this means that you're able to do multiple hits of damage and put the magma down, and then follow it up instantly by spreading more magma instantly following or trading or roll catching. In PvE, that means super good DPS output. And in PvP, it just means the same concept, but more effective. I also love the design of this thing. It just looks cool. So for me, the Magma Worm Scale Sword is ultimately cool, but weaker than the Magma Blade in terms of potential and output. But there you have it. Those are our weapons. And as you can see, I've just reorganized them. So the strongest one is on the left and the weakest one is on the right in each individual tier. Once again, though, all of these weapons, having made it onto this list, I do think they're great faith weapons. Maybe you'd organize it yourself a little bit different. And in fact, because there's so many faith weapons in this, this game, maybe there's another one you think could have made it onto this list. So let me know. For now, though, that ends our faith tier list one. That was a big one. If you've enjoyed this, please do drop a like so we can keep making videos like this. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.